Stable Diffusion. What is it and how do I use it? Looking here, Stable Diffusion states that it's a latent text image diffusion model capable of generating photorealistic images given any text input. Stable Diffusion is just a software model, but we still need a program to run it. While there's many different applications out there, one of the more popular free models is Automatic 1111. To download Automatic 1111, first you have to go to GitHub slash Automatic 1111. From there, you'll find the Stable Diffusion web UI. Here we see all the files associated with the program, but if we scroll down, we can find the installation instructions. So if we want to install for Windows, first we have to get Python. So the link's going to take you to Python 3.10.6, but that's not actually the current version. The current version, you want to go down to download all releases, or for Windows, you'll notice the button's just right here. So we'll go ahead and click that, and it'll download Python into your download directory. From here, Python 3.11.4 should be in your download directory. Just double click and run through the installation instructions. It's important that you click add Python exe to path. Now, since I already have Python installed, I'm not gonna run through it, but it's just clicking next, next, next until Python's installed. Going back to the main page, we need to next install Git. If you click the link, it'll take you to Git, and most likely you're gonna be downloading the 64-bit Git for Windows setup. Again, it'll go to your downloads. Once it's downloaded, go ahead and double click on Git. From there, follow the Git setup instructions to get it installed on your computer. Once you have Git installed, go ahead and pull up a command prompt. Switch to the directory you wish to install Automatic 11.11. I already have Automatic 11.11 installed on my E drive, but you want to make sure you're in the path where you wish to install this because once you hit the Git command, it's going to download the files and unpack them wherever you are. So ensure you're in the directory you want to have the program installed. Go ahead and copy and paste the git command out of the website into the command prompt, hit enter, and once you do, it'll download the files from the directory to your computer. Here you see on my E drive under auto 1111, I have the stable diffusion web UI and it contains all the files that were up on GitHub. From here, you can come down to the web UI user dot bat batch file, double click to execute. A command prompt window should come up and it'll take a few minutes for stable diffusion to launch onto your desktop. After automatic 1111 finishes launching, you should get a window that looks like this. From here, you can get started. So one of the things I have here that you won't have is uh, under the stability diffusion checkpoint, I actually have quite a few models that are downloaded. Uh, when you launch Stable Diffusion Automatic 11.11 for the first time, uh, you likely won't have any models depending on what version of the Git download you used. So to get that, we need to go to a place called Civit AI. So you can sign up for a uh, account here in Civit AI. It kind of keeps uh, track of some of your preferences, uh, one of them being a filter. You'll notice that uh, there are some adult content things here that are filtered out by default. Uh, you can have your filter status set. Um, but for now, what you need is you need a model to be able to run in Stable Diffusion to start generating images. So if we go up here to model, you'll see uh, this checkpoint up here. Uh, the checkpoint is a trained model uh, based off a baseline stable diffusion. Most of these are SD 1.5, which is a, a model that's been out for quite some time and has had a lot of opportunity for people to train on it. Uh, at the time of recording, SD XL is out, and I will make a video on that. But for now, we'll look at stable diffusion 1.5 models because there are quite a few uh, trained out there. Uh, as you can see, the most popular is Dream Shaper, so we'll go ahead and use that. Uh, Dream Shaper 8 just came out. I actually just downloaded it today and uploaded it into my models file, but I'll go through that to show you how that works. Uh, Dream Shaper, I mean, as you can see, you can read about it. Uh, it creates kind of a realistic uh, artsy type models. Uh, I think there's a lot that's trained on female and anime types, uh, fantasy type. 
So, uh, you know, looking down here, let's take a look and see if we can find an image that uh, we might want to try to recreate uh, right here. So we'll start with this mountainscape here. We'll uh, use this as our target when we download the model and see if we can slowly recreate this as we go through. So to download the model, you'll come up to the top here and uh, download. Now it is two gigs, which is pretty big, uh, but most of these models are two gigs. And I think uh, the stable diffusion SDXL models are five to six gigs. So, you know, make sure you have the hard drive space. And if you want to start collecting these, uh, you may have to delete some out or, you know, move your stable diffusion off to a larger hard drive to, you know, keep track of all the models that you're downloading. So go ahead and click download. And again, that'll drop into your downloads folder. Uh, since I've already done that, I'm not going to do that again. But from there, you'll go to wherever you have stable diffusion installed. You'll come down to models. Then you'll go to stable diffusion. And in here, you'll see I have all the two and six gig files. I've got SDXL in there and a few of these other models that I've been playing with. You'll move that uh, download from the downloads directory into this. You will have to restart Stable Diffusion for that model to take effect. Uh, and once you do, then you can get started creating your first AI image. So as we mentioned earlier, one of the most basic premise of this program is to take text prompt and create an image. So we can get started with a basic image, like a man walking down the street. We hit generate. Hopefully that's what we see. And sure enough, we get a basic picture of a man walking down the street. Now that's nice, but I want to create a picture something like this. So how do I do that? So the first thing we need to work on is our prompt. This is pretty simple. With a prompt, you can actually string together many different texts with commas to emphasize what you're trying to get out of your picture. For the image we saw, the prompt for it looks something like this. So we have autumn, sunrise, mountains, wooden, village on a river, 8K, 4K. So all these things emphasize what you're trying to get out of the algorithm. The algorithm knows what 4K HD is, and it knows what 8K HD is. And when you throw all these different words at the algorithm, it can help form uh, the type of image you're looking for. So if we use the prompt for that image and we hit generate, we'll see that we got an image similar to what we started with. Now it's by no means the same, but you know, it's in the same ballpark. One of the first things you can tweak to change how an image looks is the sampler. So if we switch the sampler to something else, say Kara's 2M SDE and hit generate with the same prompt, the picture itself shouldn't change too much, but the style should look a little different. So now the style looks a little more realistic and a little less like a painting. The water has some photorealism to it, though we didn't change the prompt at all. Another thing you can introduce is a negative prompt. So negative prompt are the things you don't want to see. Um, quite often AI is bad at drawing hands or putting multiple limbs on people. People usually use a lot of negative prompts to filter out things that look bad from people or bad on people. Um, I think the person who created the image we're looking at uh, just has a generalized negative prompt because there's a lot of things about extra limbs and missing limbs. But we'll go ahead and use that same negative prompt. Again, this is the image we're looking at. We didn't change anything else except the negative prompt, and we'll go ahead and generate another image. So just by adding that negative prompt, we have a lot more color. I'd say things look more realistic. The building kind of looks more real. I believe in the last one, the building kind of looked a little um, impossible. So again, now by adding some negative prompts, but not touching any other uh, setting, 
we have an image that looks closer and closer to you know what we're looking for again going back to the image reminder of what we're shooting for something like this so actually going back to the image you'll notice that the size is different so by default stable diffusion likes to output 512 by 512 and for the most part when you're learning that's where you want to stay uh, it's pretty simple to render it doesn't take a long time it's very easy on your graphics card um, and allows you to fine-tune what you're looking for and then when you get there then you can start playing with the image size however I happen to know that that image is a uh, 1024 by 1352 so again not changing our prompts not changing anything else we're just changing our image size and we go ahead and generate again You'll see that now that it has the additional real estate, it's starting to create those tall mountains, kind of like what we see in this image. You know, so we're getting there. Now that we're dialing in, what we can do is take the seed from our target image. So because we're starting with a known image and we're aiming towards it, having something like the seed can go a long way. So the seed is just the random noise that is initially introduced so the AI has something to cling to. Think of it as static from an old TV screen, and the AI is trying to see a picture in that static and then draws around it. So a random seed will produce random static, which is why you might get a different image every time you hit the generate button. But once you get a picture in the genre that you like, you can freeze that seed or record that seed and reuse it. And then as you start tweaking your parameters, the image won't change a whole lot because it's starting with the same seed. So using the seed from the image we're looking at, we go in and hit the generate button again. You'll see that we're getting even closer. A lot of the same flowers in the front. We've got the stream running down the middle. We've got the mountains on one side, some details on the other side, but it's still not there. It hasn't finished rendering, but we can kind of see where we're getting at. Um, you know, we actually have the sun up in the same place now. We have the clouds in the sky. You know, it's not bad, but again, we're, we're still not there. So another thing we can play with is the scale. The image we're looking at is using a 6 on the scale, and it's actually using 28 steps. So steps are kind of uh, repeating the process. On the first step, it's looking at that initial seed, that noise, and kind of drawing the first iteration of the picture. And as you increase the steps, it goes through and refines again and again. So you notice if you take the steps up, it's going to take longer to process, but you'll get a more refined image. Now there are diminishing returns, and then it can actually go kind of sour on you if you go too many steps. So you're going to have to learn to play with this and find out what works best for the types of prompts you're using, the sampler you're using, and even the model that you're using. So moving it up to 28 steps, let's go ahead and hit generate. So as you see, I think we're even closer. Um, the mountains on the side sort of look similar to the mountains over here. Sun still up in the leaving streaks across the sky. Uh, we've got the water. We don't have the rocks. You know, we're close, but we're still not there. A few more things that were originally tweaked uh, were clip skip. I happen to know this one used two, and the ETA samplers. So both of these deserve a video unto themselves. Um, but clip skip, um, as a, a quick review, would be uh, the model that's used for the AI it goes through several layers of algorithm as it's going through its little neural processing. And clip skip actually skips over uh, one of the steps towards the end, which some people have found that you know, causes you know, some of those weird hand issues I was mentioning earlier. So some people like to use clip skip 
try to you know take away some of those problems that can get in the further refinement in the AI model. Uh, now there's no people in the image we're generating, but every parameter that you mess with does create a different image. Not necessarily better or worse, but it will create something different. So if we pump up clip skip to two and bring down the sampler, um, this particular variable here actually is a multiplier that affects the seed. So uh, the higher the value on here, the, the further you have a drift from your original seed, which can also generate a slightly different image. So let's go ahead and generate with these parameters. And as you see, the image we end up with isn't exactly the image we started with here, but it's pretty close. We have the stone pillar in the center. We have the river with rocks in it, the flowers in the foreground, the trees, the sun. Uh, this is a pretty close approximation to the image we were shooting for. And there we go. Thank you all for watching. I sure had fun putting this together. If you have any questions, please leave a comment down below. I'm hoping to put on more videos like this soon, so if you enjoyed, stay tuned for more.